In last week's video, I showed you that I had a little problem with my center finder indicator thing here. And off camera, I played a bit more with it to do a little bit of testing. So I tried to center this thing, which is fixed on the table, of course. And I always had the same problem. If I turn it, there is almost a half a millimeter of difference. And then I installed this little block here in the vise. There is a very nice and deep center punch in it. So I installed it here and with the needle I tried to center it and I had exactly the same problem. So I took the whole thing apart and installed it here in the vise. Of course the central axle, the spindle here now, is fixed in the vise and I can turn the body. And my indicator is installed on the surface that normally moves the needle. In theory this should be square. Otherwise, of course, it doesn't work. So I have no idea what happened to it. I suppose maybe it was overrun one day by a freight train or something. But uh, for the moment it is a useless piece of equipment. And maybe I can save it, uh, recut it or whatever. We'll see. But first, I would like to make an adjustable parallel. And for those who doesn't know what an adjustable parallel is, it's are two pieces in a wedge shape and by sliding it the height different. That's all. Of course I have absolutely no need of adjustable parallels, but I think it is a very nice little project an exercise to do on the shaper. But maybe it's better to first of all pop a vise on this thing. Pop. Indeed it is better. I started this video and of course also the project with installing the vise and all these things I need and I forgot that maybe I need a piece of material to make my parallel thing here. And luckily I found exactly what I need. So I will cut in pieces and go for it. First starting a project without even knowing that you have the right material. That's maybe not really smart. But if you want to see a smart guy at work Maybe you didn't come at the right place. But okay, I did cut the part in two and now I'm gonna square up all these faces and let's do this. <coughs> Depth of cut 0.5 millimeter. Just enough to, to clean it up. I'm running at 100 strokes a minute, which gives a cutting speed of about 18 meters a minute. I stopped cleaning up these surfaces after only these two are done, and of course these two also, because first I want to cut this groove in here. This is more or less the idea. I'm gonna make a dovetail. I have of course no idea how the real thing looks because I never had adjustable parallels in my hand, but I'm gonna try something. And the idea is to cut a groove here in the middle, two millimeter wide, two millimeter deep. My first plan was to cut the dovetail at 45 degrees, 2 millimeter wide, 
cut at 45 which means this distance is also 2 and on the other side also so 2 the width of this 2 2 together will make 6 this part are almost 8 millimeters which means the thickness left here and here will be less than 1 millimeter and imagine this is not really in center because these surfaces are not finished yet I can cheat a bit and, and slide yeah so 45 degrees is maybe not a good idea I will try it at 30 and at uh, 30 degrees it is 1.15 millimeter wide instead of 2 I think this will be better. I wasn't very happy with the surface finish, so now I give the thing a touch with the shear tool. And of course also now I will be sure that this surface I'm cutting now will be perfectly in line or parallel with the features I'm gonna cut later. I installed the grooving tool and normally I should be ready to start grooving. 2 mm wide, 2 mm deep. Let's see what happens. I hope it will work a little bit better than last time. The surface finish in this groove looks a bit like nothing at all, but at least I didn't break anything. So let's call it a win anyway. I made a new little cutting tool, ground at of course 30 degrees, and I installed the tool slide also at 30 degrees. And for those who still have problems with how to set the clapper box, very easy. 30 degrees. This will be the bottom of the V we're gonna cut. And the line of the clapper box has to be within this angle. So this one a little bit less than 30 degrees and a little bit more than 0 degrees. I'm using the VFD to slow the machine down and I have to cut down 2.3 millimeters. And this should be it. Right, let's take it out, flip around and cut the other side. Good. I'm cutting the slot here in my part that will allow of course to pinch it together to hold the top part in place and I use my 2 mm end mill and I go very slowly very easy and from the thing in coolant so it will wash away the chips and one moment I hear this little click you never want to hear and here's the result. Decided to die on me. The problem is, this is the only 2mm cutter I have. So now I have to, I don't know. A solution could be of course to cut it with a slitting saw. 
that could work and as you can see I even have one a one millimeter width but for this it will be perfectly fine but of course as always there is a problem this one is missing some teeth and for sure when I use it as is it will rip up of all the rest of this teeth so I think it will be back to the shaper after all it's a shaper exercise right and I don't know what's happening today but about nothing works the way I want it to work first I wanted to use this cutting blade this is a nice wedge shaped cutting blade and I install it here and I start tightening and now I have two very small cutting blades so this one died on me I don't know what happened but so I had to use again this useless piece of high-speed steel that is uh, really soft and gummy and doesn't work at all and I started cutting to bring the not cutting but I brought the tool down in the slot I already did make a little bit on the milling machine and I saw that slowly but surely the cutting tool started to bend away so I re-grind make sure that uh, all the clearance angles are right and in theory it should work but it doesn't and when I reached the bottom of the already existing slot the whole thing binded up it blocked and machine stopped working I don't think it's my day today maybe it's the wind I don't know so I think I'm gonna stop with this stupid uh, useless uh, slot I have to cut in here and uh, I'm gonna clean up the dovetail and make the dovetail on the other part at least I will have a little bit of exercise this seat doesn't work I just finished a little bit cleaning up this uh, little dovetail here and then now it looks a little bit better and to cut the male side I changed cutting tool this is a better quality high speed steel and this side of the tool will serve as a form tool so I dialed in the full depth and I will move the tool that way in fact it's moving the table this way but sometimes it's a little bit complicated so I move the table this way and it should be uh, 2.15 millimeter after this flip the part around cut the other side and check looks good let's do the other side according to my dials I have to cut a little bit more but let's test fit anyway Indeed, cut more. it's a tight fit but I think after a little bit of deburring it will work I think it worked 
and there's a little bit of wiggle in here but not too much I think it will work right let's clean up these surface surfaces and these <laughs> Here to finish. Nice. While I was recording the next segment, you're gonna see my neighbor was working in a garden and he used some kind of very, very noisy machine. So I had to cut out the sound. Conclusion. I think I made it way more complicated than it should be. But of course it's a hobby so that's not really a problem. Now imagine you want to make something similar. But on the milling machine you will need a very special and very small little cutter to make this dovetail. And I think it will be more or less impossible but if you make this thing in two parts or maybe in three one part two parts you can use whatever dovetail cutter as long as the angle is right if it's too wide no problem you can use it and when the both half dovetail cutters are uh, dovetails are cut, you bring both parts together, bolt them or rivet or whatever, and I think that could work very well too. And the idea of pinching the dovetail is maybe not really important because my little parts, if I can assemble them without glasses, as you can see they hold. So as is, it would work just fine. I know, now you're gonna tell me that I should cut these two sides here square. And you're probably right. But I also think I went to enough trouble to make a little thing that I probably never gonna use.